In this edition of the Parliament Report, controversial revenue bill passed, anti-gang law for tabling in Parliament on June 25, and youth minister wants new round of debate on abortion law. The government used its superior numbers in Parliament on June 19 to push through a revenue bill that the parliamentary opposition described as a spy law. The bill was passed with six amendments. Following extensive debate on an amendment to the Revenue Administration Act, members of the opposition say they could not support the proposed law in its current form. The legislation gives increased powers to the revenue authorities to go after tax cheats. Members of the parliamentary opposition called for a divide, and when the votes were counted, 20 government members said yes to the passage of the bill, while 13 members on the opposition benches said no. 29 members were absent. Parliamentarians engaged in a six-hour debate on June 19 before the legislation was passed. In his contribution to the debate, opposition leader Andrew Holney said the bill creates an espionage operation in the Revenue Department. According to Holness, under the proposed law, the Commissioner General may enter into a contract with anyone to obtain information on tax dodgers. However, this provision in the bill was amended to restrict the sharing of information to public bodies only. The long-awaited anti-gang legislation is to be tabled in Parliament before the end of June. National Security Minister Peter Bunting told his parliamentary colleagues on June 19 that the Legislative Committee of Cabinet on Tuesday approved the bill. The anti-gang bill, officially titled the Criminal Justice Suppression of Organized Criminal Groups Act, is aimed at suppressing and disrupting organized criminal enterprises. In his contribution to the sectoral debate, Bunting said the bill would amend existing laws. And the DNA bill is expected to be tabled in Parliament within two months. Bunting told lawmakers that his ministry was awaiting responses from the Attorney General's Department and the Legal Reform Department on the proposed legislation. The, the legislation is aimed at empowering the relevant authority to provide for the taking of DNA samples from persons arrested in relation to specified offenses. At the same time, the Trafficking in Persons Act, which was tabled in Parliament earlier in June, will be passed before the House rises for the summer recess. Minister of Youth and Culture Lisa Hanna has indicated that the time has come for Jamaica to review the Ill illegality of abortion. Hanna observed that debate on abortion has been taking place for decades. Noting that abortion is still illegal in Jamaica, the youth minister says a woman's right to choose whether or not to keep her pregnancy is exercised only by those who can afford a private doctor. She noted that the law which prohibits abortion is archaic and debate on whether to change the statute has been taking place for the last 38 years. Currently, the law makes abortion illegal except in some cases of medical emergency. According to Section 72 of the Offenses Against a Person Act, anyone found guilty of having or facilitating an abortion could be sentenced to life in prison with or without hard labor. State Minister for Water, Land, Environment and Climate Change, Ian Hales, says his ministry is working feverishly to resurrect the Rapid Response Unit. He accused the former Jamaica Labour Party administration of shutting down the unit. Hills told his fellow legislators on June 18 that several trucks from the Rapid Response Unit were handed over to other government agencies. The state minister, who was making his contribution to the sectoral debate in Parliament, said the unit now has 26 of the 100 trucks that were in its fleet. Hales argued that the poor decision to scrap the unit was brought into sharp focus earlier this year when the country, particularly farmers, experienced one of the worst droughts in recent memory. The Rapid Response Unit was created as an emergency facility to provide water on a temporary basis to communities affected by severe drought. Discussing plans to transform the unit this year, Hales said he would be leading a team to develop an effective and strategic business plan for rapid response. First term Member of Parliament for Western St. Mary, Jolan Silvera, has argued that productivity in the agricultural sector should not be driven by preferential tariff incentives. Making his maiden contribution to the sectoral debate in Parliament on June 19, Silvera said that the government should create its own domestic incentives for full and robust agricultural activity. This, he said, should be used to secure the country's basic food supply. 
The government MP reasoned that food and energy security are fundamental pillars of the country's economy that should be protected at all times. This has been another edition of the Parliament Report. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, I'm Edmund Campbell saying, walk good.